In a previous video, I told you that anaphylactic shock is the result of mast cell activation. In this video, we're going to discuss the acute treatment of anaphylactic shock and how it can save someone's life. Recall that mast cell activation was characterized by the release of a number of powerful chemicals, including histamine, histamine, leukotriene C4 or LTC4, and prostaglandin D2 or PGD2, as it's abbreviated, and that these chemicals dramatically altered the function of the skin, of the lungs, of the gut. And understanding the important treatment for anaphylactic shock depends on understanding exactly what these chemicals do, especially to blood vessels and airways. Firstly, they cause blood vessel dilation. Blood vessel dilation, or vasodilation, as it's sometimes called, which is essentially the relaxation of the smooth muscle that's in the wall of the blood vessel. This decreases resistance in the circulatory system, resistance, and that leads to decreased blood pressure. At the same time, there is retraction of the endothelial cells, which creates these gaps between endothelial cells, and there's a loss of fluid from the blood space, fluid from the blood space, and that fluid has to go somewhere, so it leaks out of the blood vessels and accumulates in the tissues, where it can cause swelling. So here in the tissues, it can cause swelling, and that swelling may cause airway obstruction if it occurs in the throat, for example. But also the loss of volume from the blood contributes to decreased blood pressure. And then thirdly, these chemicals, especially leukotriene C4, that's a very potent constrictor of the smooth muscle in the airways, so that causes bronchoconstriction. Bronchoconstriction. And that will increase the resistance to airflow, increased resistance. And that, as part of an asthma attack, can cause decreased oxygenation in the blood and increased retention of CO2 or carbon dioxide. So the treatment of anaphylactic shock is firstly its recognition, but then as soon as possible, the administration of epinephrine. Epinephrine, epinephrine, also called adrenaline, is a natural hormone produced by the adrenal glands, and it has a number of important effects. It will increase the heart rate. So the heart will beat faster, and that's going to help improve blood pressure. So increase the blood pressure. It's also going to increase the contractility of the heart, the contraction, like how strongly the heart squeezes so that with each beat it uh, expels more blood, and that's going to increase blood pressure as well. But epinephrine also has effects on the peripheral blood vessels, and it causes blood vessel, blood vessel constriction or vasoconstriction, kind of doing the opposite of what happened under the influence of histamine, leukotrienes, prostaglandins. And that's going to help increase blood pressure as well by increasing resistance. Increasing resistance, and that leads to increased blood pressure. Also, the blood vessel constriction will mean that there's decreased fluid loss. And with that, there's kind of an attenuation or a decrease in tissue swelling as the lymphatics clean up the fluid that already accumulated in those peripheral tissues outside of the blood vessels. And then last but not least, Epinephrine will cause bronchodilation. So it has opposite effects, just as the mediators like histamine and leukotriene and prostaglandin had opposite effects in blood vessels causing dilation here and constriction here. Epinephrine 
directly addresses this by causing constriction in the blood vessels and dilation in the airways, and that's going to improve oxygenation. Airflow by decreasing resistance, it'll increase airflow and therefore improve oxygen in the blood and decrease the retention of carbon dioxide in the blood. Now, it's important to note, though, that if a patient presents with anaphylactic shock, there's so much vasodilation that if they're standing or sitting, there may be a lot of pooling of blood in the veins, especially in the lower extremities. So that when epinephrine is given, it is important to position the patient, position the patient, the patient lying down. So if here's the head and here are the arms, it's important to have the legs kind of elevated on some structure here, doesn't matter what, so that there will be what, what gravity will cause the blood that is pooled in the legs to return towards the heart. If someone were standing up uh, or sitting up and gravity were pulling blood into the legs when they received epinephrine, epinephrine would still make the heart work harder, beat faster and more vigorously. But without sufficient volume of blood, because it's all pooled in the legs, the person can rapidly faint and may even die. So epinephrine is a very powerful uh, medication that can help in anaphylactic shock, but if it's not administered correctly, it can actually make things worse. If there's been tremendous fluid loss because of vasodilation, it may be important as well to, pro to replete that, to replace that. So IV fluids can be administered to help increase blood volume and increase blood pressure. If there's been a lot of bronchoconstriction, it may be important to provide supplemental oxygen. And if there's been profoundly low blood pressure and the heart has been damaged, say by ischemia or actually a heart attack like a myocardial infarction, as can happen with especially older patients who suffer anaphylactic shock, then it's important to provide cardiopulmonary resuscitation or advanced cardiac life support, which includes things like chest compressions, chest compressions, and rescue breaths, rescue breaths. But what if anaphylaxis occurs in the community outside of an emergency department? So for that, there's a very important medicine that patients who are at risk for or who have had anaphylaxis are given, and that's an epinephrine auto-injector. Basically, this is a device about the size of a chunky pen that has a needle a dose of epinephrine here's the epinephrine in a in a container epinephrine and a spring so this is a spring-loaded dose of epinephrine administered through a needle. And if a patient detects that he or she is starting to get an, a, a, an episode of anaphylaxis, uh, he or she or a family member or a friend or even an, an, you know, a bystander who knows how to use one can take this epinephrine auto-injector and hold it against the leg of the patient's in the upper leg, the thigh. So here's the thigh. There's a big muscle group here in the thigh. And by holding it against the thigh and pressing this button, which deploys the spring, that will push the needle out. The needle will go out. And the plunger will be depressed. And that will deliver the epinephrine into the muscle where it's rapidly picked up by the circulation and that will have all the beneficial effects of increasing the heart rate, increasing contractility of the heart, and it will decrease swelling and open up the airways. This is a life-saving medication. Unfortunately, epinephrine is very short-acting and so therefore its main use is in providing support uh, for the patient to get emergency assistance by getting, say, to an emergency department for definitive care.